Let's put our hands together again and welcome. Amen. Amen. This is my season for grace, for favor. This is my season to reap what I have sown. This is my season for grace, for favor. God is moving in the atmosphere right now. If you just claim it, everything is working together for my good. Everything is working together for my good. It is my God that is blessing in my life. It is my God that is taking over right now. It is my God that is moving in the house right now. Come through, Holy Spirit, with a mighty rushing wind. Come through right now. Sweep over the house right now. We need a rainbow word from heaven right now. God, we need your presence. God, we need your love. God, we need a touch from you right now. Heavenly Father, come through right now, through this house right now. Have your way in this house right now. Shed it on like it did be dead. Right now, dear God, just come through. Move in the atmosphere. And rainbow word. We speak rainbow word. Rainbow word. Lord, as we ask, we come together, we ask that you forgive us for our sins. Those that we did knowingly, we knew we shouldn't have done it. Those that we did unknowingly, we erred because of our ignorance. And those that we did because our minds, our mouths, or our attitudes didn't reflect you. Wash us with the divine presence of the Holy Spirit. Give us strength right now. Bring us to that perfect place that is in communion with you. Now, God, open the eyes of our hearts that we see you so clearly. Open the ears of our hearts that we hear a word from heaven. And open up our souls that we may apply your word to our everyday life. And now, most gracious and heavenly Father, I do ask that you hide me behind the cross. That men do not see me and only see you. That yes, your will and your glory go forth this hour. It is this that we do pray in the matchless, precious, and powerful Son, Jesus Christ's name. As we all together will say thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. 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 You can go ahead and be seated in His holy presence today. We're going to forego the formality of standing for the reading of the word. I want to first, before I get into the word, I'd like to get the protocol and the so-call out of the way. So first of all, let me give honor to this outstanding shepherd and shepherdess of this household. Yes. The angels of Miracle Christian yes. Fellowship Church. My good friend, Amen. Bishop Solomon Akaraman and Pastor Maggie Akaraman uh, without which I would not be as strong in the faith as I am now. I bring you greetings and thank you for the invitation to help celebrate church anniversary. You know, as many churches as you drive by and you see vacant in the city of Houston, because I see it a lot in the city of Dallas, you ought to be thankful that somebody's still celebrating. Am I right about it? Man, and so yes, uh, a blessing to all of the distinguished dignitaries. If I don't know you by name or by title, I'm going to address you and salute you as servants of God. Yeah. Because out of all my titles that I hold, that's the best. That's, that's the best title yeah. I hold. So for all of you servants of God. Whether you're the clergy or the lay staff, I bring you greetings and bless you in God's name. Pastor, did I get everybody? I didn't miss nobody, right? All right, so now we can get in the word. I don't want nobody rolling their eyes and can't hear the word because I 
forgot to mention them. Apostle Tebow, you know how it is. We, we, we got to try to make sure to check all the boxes. Check so that box is out of the way. All right. And so I'd like to talk to you today. We, it, we, and it, it's so funny. He was, he, was, he, he was tapping all in my message. I say, okay, God, so I see what you're saying. You're saying you got me on the right track. So I don't plan on being before you long, but I do plan on giving you a word from heaven. Is that all right? I didn't come all the way to Dallas to impress you. I came all the way to Dallas to make an impression about God. So we're going to do that on today. Is that all right? Turning in your Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 14. We only have four verses. Exodus chapter 14. We'll begin reading at the 10th verse. When you found it, say signify so by amen. Sometimes they be so fast up there, they'll even have it reading on the screen for you. So if you don't have your Bible, just wait. They may even clue you in. Look on with your neighbor or listen in to me and we're going to go ahead. Coming from the King James Version of the Bible, the Word of God reads as such. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord and they said unto Moses because there were no graves in Egypt hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt saying let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. Oh my God. Oh my God. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Yes. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians who you've seen today, you shall see them again no more. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. The Lord, somebody say the Lord, the Lord. shall fight for you, fight for and ye shall hold your peace. Lord. The word of God for the people of God, and uh, may all of God's people just say, Amen. Amen. I'd like to talk to you today about overcoming through divine strength. Well, learning to let God fight our fight. Yes. I'll say that again. We want to talk today about overcoming through divine strength. Letting God fight our fight. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We have seen in the church people getting discouraged. People losing their faith, if you will. If, you, if, if, you, if you're not careful, Apostle Bell, you can tell me if you haven't seen it, a couple of two, three, four pastors just walk away from the pastor because they've given up faith. They feel discouraged. They feel that it's been useless doing their job because people are just not holding on to God the way we strive after, the way we pray after, the way we preach after, the way we pull after and stand in the gap for, and they've lost their faith. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on. And it's because they're fighting fights that seem like incredulous fights. They seem like impossible fights to, to, to win because when you start fighting addiction, that don't just get over just because I said sim sim solid bim, blink my eyes, wink my nose, and it's gone away. Paul said, hey, I prayed about this thing thrice, and the Lord still has yet to deliver me. There's a problem because when we're facing our fight, many times it challenges our faith. And my problem is, is that we got too many believers that got more faith in their problems than they got faith in the problem solved. Can I be real and just show you what I'm talking about? I see I was going to, uh, to court to stand in the gap for someone in the legal system. And I found out that some people have more faith in the judge than they have faith in God. You know how, you know how I mean that? Because see, when the judge says you be at court at 9 a.m., if I don't see you, I will find you in contempt of court. I will issue an arrest warrant and you will not see light of day till I see fit to see you before my court. And how many of you see them getting there 30 minutes minutes early, 45 minutes early. They got the first parking spot. But yet on Sunday morning, pastor says I won't. I'm just three or four to show up to Sunday school so the Sunday school teacher can give 
us a word and can help us get stronger. And we find that they come 15 minutes late after church has already started. Well, they didn't come for Sunday school, but if they if they make it before the offering, then they feel like they on time. Why? Because they got more faith in the judge than they got faith in God. And so I, I see us struggling with life and I see us looking at our insurmountable enemies, but we've got to realize that we've got an unsurmountable God. And so here's where we're going to overcome. How many of you looking for your breakthrough on tonight? See, I come tonight to tell you that God is here to help us you in breakthrough. Tonight is your night. You're going to get what you need and even a few things that you want because God is just that good. But how are we going to get that? Well, we've got to come to a mind and understand that God wants believers to receive our breakthrough by allowing him to help us break out. See, it's not by will and it's not by might, but it's by the power of God that I can come forth and I can gain strength, that I can walk away from addiction and I can walk away from affliction. I can walk around dis-ease and I can walk around mis-ease. I can actually look over you because I'm looking through you to who but God. And so we, we, we've got to get to this line. And so I then began to look at the children of Israel because y'all know those children remind us of us so much. Yeah, so much, yeah, so much. Yeah. See, they began to look at the problem and they had a problem that you cannot get a breakthrough, a, a, a break out if you don't understand this. We will allow God to break, to help us break out when we decide to break free from this belief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got to stop looking at your enemy and your problem and the people around you right. and start looking at the God and the Bible yes. and the words that was taught to you. Yes. Jesus said, if you love me, then keep my commandments. Yes. So if you're going to be a disciple of Christ, yes. then you got to stop looking at what the disciples of the demon put before you. Yes. That's good, right there. See, what, 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 what happened is we saw Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a bad son of, y'all know who I'm talking about. Pharaoh was a bad man. And so now the children of Israel thought they got out. They moved on up to the east side with a deluxe apartment. They, 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 they was already doing something, going somewhere, and then here all their enemies come back. Yeah. Let me tell you what's going to happen in this season. See, God is going to break you out and people are going to try to break you off and try to break you back down. And if you're not careful and you don't stop looking at them, you're going to miss your blessing. See, you got to break free from disbelief. Look at what they looked at. They looked at, hey, this is Pharaoh. Didn't we tell you we won't come out here and get killed? Didn't we tell you it's been better for him whipping us on the back, making us build pyramids and statues that look like him, going through all that work, getting no, all that overtime and getting no pay? But wasn't that better than to come out here and die? Hey. And so this is what's happening in today's context. I begin to look at, well, that doctor's had 65 years worth of training and medicine and 25 years worth of doctor schooling. And so when the doctor gives me a sentence, I'm ready to roll over and die. But I ask you a question today. Whose report are you going to believe? Because God said I speak life and that more abundantly. I can get my breakthrough when I remember doctors on Give me a sentence, but God finishes the paragraph. And that's what I need. I need somebody that can give me the whole story because of his glory. So I'm not looking at how big you look, but I'm looking at how bad my God is. Y'all know I gotta I got speak through this. I gotta get through this. So we, we, we understand that God will, that, that we will allow God to help us to break out when we decide to break free from this belief. This belief will destroy us. Yes, it will. Because my Bible told me, now Pastor Maggie, you're a Bible scholar, so help me out. But don't worry, something say something sort of similar to that without faith it's impossible to please God. Yeah. So why are you looking at your situation thinking the situation is bigger than your God? Where is your faith? 
Diabetes can't take me out. No. My father died at 60, but I'm looking at a life of longevity. I'm not, I'm not claiming that. Diabetes exists, but diabetes can't persist because the blood of Jesus is in me. I, I, so I have to remove disbelief right. from my mindset, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I also got to remove dis disbelieving people out of my oh, zip code. Oh, 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 oh. I got to stop walking around you, and every time I tell you how good God is, you tell me, yeah, but. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but Christians have made a whole lot of people so bad that they're ready to go to hell and die because they feel like hell. Oh, you preaching, man. Get the yeah buts out of your life. See, I loved it back in the, in the, in the early 90s. Charles Barkley and, and many of the superstars, they had what was called a fave five. And so here was the thing. If you were in my fave five, I could get unlimited calls, unlimited texts yeah. from you. But everybody else had to pay with a price. But guess what? Your problem is the people that you got in your fave five are the people that are keeping you from seeing God. Oh, that's right. So you might want to change your number or you change your attitude yeah. one way or the other. Because here's the thing, how can any two walk together except they yeah. agree? Yeah. So guess what? If you unbelieving, if you got half faith, then when you start talking me down, then I'm going to start listening to you. I'm going to start acting like you. I'm going to stop believing and I'm not going to receive. That's right. That's right. Because I'm doing what you do. If you don't believe, why should I? Yeah. Cut right. the people out of your life. Yeah. And so now, we also understand that we will allow God to help us break out when we decide to break free from disloyalty. Mm. Oh yeah, this is hard because, you know, we got to be more loyal to God than we try to be loyal to these people. Because yeah. really, they don't love you, no. if I can just be honest. Some of them really don't even like you. Yeah. But in the 138th number of Psalms, verse number 7, it says... Uh, and I quote, though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of my enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. We got to start being loyal to the God that can do something rather than the people that can't do nothing. That's right. Yeah, you know what? I, I, I got news for y'all. If y'all call me back, I got the church to preach on. If next Sunday, I'll be right there. So y'all don't have to invite me back. But I'm going to tell you what's true. I'm going to tell you what's right. So you ain't got to like it. Oh, you know, no. Nah, that, that preacher was too radical. Well, the Jesus I served was pretty radical, too. Yeah. Because, see, I need you to understand, you know what a breakthrough is, right? Yeah. See, a breakthrough, as Webster defines it, is an act or an instance of moving through or beyond an obstacle. Yeah. If you're here tonight, you got, you're got you about ready to break through that obstacle that's yeah, been yeah, in your way. Yeah, yeah. If it's sickness and health, it's already blocked yeah. through. It's already, because by yeah. his stripes are we healed. If it's poverty and lack, he yeah. said the wealth of the richest that are stored up for the righteous. He yeah. said he owns the cattle of a thousand hills. So when he leave heaven, he never leave his pocketbook. Yeah. If I need it, God's got it. I got to start yeah. walking through that because I'm getting my breakthrough yeah. on the night. Then I got to tell you that if I'm going to break out, I understand that a breakout is a violent or forceful break from restraining condition or a restraining situation. The devil done had you for too long, so I'm glad you're here tonight because God is about to break out and move. Holy Spirit is about to do something in you because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. From blessing me. So right about now, see if I had somebody believe that I'd have some people standing up on their feet praising God right now. If I just had just a ten thousand tongues, I couldn't praise you enough. So I'm just gonna say hallelujah for my breakthrough. Hallelujah for my breakout. Hallelujah. Cause the enemy can't stop me no more. No more. No more. Oh, boy, I, I really wish I could preach this text. I gotta get past this. I gotta get past this. So I, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna throw one last little bit in, just for us to hold on to. When I get to the point that I break free from disbelief and I break free from disloyalty, I got to find myself 
breaking free from disconnection. Mm. Come on. Yeah. Yes. Jesus said, yeah. stay close to the vine. Yes, I am the vine. Yes. And you are the branches. Yes. You can't live without God. No, man. And stop running away from church every time you mess up. Ah. Come on now. Yes. Ooh, you want to not show up to the church because you feel shame. Well, guess what? Everybody in there is just like you because every one of us used to be something. Am I right, preacher? What didn't you used to be? See, see, some of us were whores. Some of us were alcoholics. See, I'm going to tell you about me. I, I, can I share my sin? I wasn't an alcoholic. I was a drunk. You know why? I never went to no classes. I was a drunk, certified. That's what I got to. You know, I wasn't a whore. See, I didn't do that. You know, because see, I was a one-woman man, and I figured that my body was pure gold, and I ain't dipping gold in anything that ain't worth putting it into. So I, that wasn't my thing. Come on, man. But I had my thing. And the problem in the church is there's too many people who pretend like they ain't had no thing. <laughs> like, I, 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 I've arrived and I've been there. No, you ain't because Paul said, if you understand this text, and you won't disconnect from me because not as I've already attained, but yet this I do for it. I press towards the mark. Paul was saying, perfection is not a destiny, it's a process. And I'm getting myself ready for God to come I got to close, I got to close, I got to close. But I, 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 I just got to throw this one in for free. He said, be still. And know that I'm God. Be still and see the salvation of the Lord. Many times you're not getting your breakthrough because you keep breaking up God and messing up stuff. It's time for you to close your mouth. Fix your attitude. Can I tell you, you need to fix your focus. Your glasses are so distorted, you can't see nothing but the hurt they're doing to you rather than the God of, than the love of God putting on you. And see, when you start to get in mess, God won't bless your mess. Some of you not gotten your breakthrough because you keep putting mess in the middle of God doing work. God is trying to change their heart and you trying to heal your own heart. Well, if you could do it, why did you need the Savior to come down and die for you? If you, if, if you could do it, then why would he wrote the first Peter 5 and 7 clause in the Bible that says, cast your cares upon me? God knew there were some things you couldn't handle. When they rolled their eyes at you, you couldn't handle it. When they talked bad about you, you couldn't handle it. When he cheated on you with the 6th and 7th and 8th and ninth and 10th woman, God knew about it already. If you could handle it, then he would have told you just handle it. No, he said, you can call out on me. And then he said, I'll make your enemies your footstool. He just said, you had to do nothing but lift your leg. If you want to get a breakthrough tonight, then it's time to break free. It's time to break free from disconnection. Break free from disloyalty. Break free from disobedience. So that God can move in you. So tonight, when the minister comes up, male, female, whoever, and they offer you the best thing they can offer you, which is God. Jesus. Run down here and get your blessing. All right, yeah. Run down here and get your miracle. Yeah. Because if you don't run and come and get it, somebody else will come get in the way and get theirs. Yeah. And you know what? You can't blame nobody but yourself. Right. The word of God for the people of God and all of God's people would say amen. Amen.